What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. It is so good to see you guys again. And like guys, you guys like my hair, it's all messed up. Today, we are going to be doing a little bit of work to this golf cart right here. It is a 2005 club car precedent that I got for 800 bucks and it was a complete basket case. So we're restoring the entire thing. Over here we have a 95 Sun Classic that belongs to my brother and it's awesome but we're not gonna be talking about that one today. We're gonna be doing this. I've already started to install the uh, six inch lift kit by Kingzilla. I've already started to install this six inch lift kit by Kingzilla and you can see the packaging is pretty nice. Um, just a couple of things. Um, when I opened it, the, one of the spindles had a grease fitting that was already broken and uh, I was able to get it out. I messaged the Amazon seller to see if they could just send me a new spindle. Um, but since I got the grease fitting out, I'm just gonna put one in and just see if they could give me some money back instead. We'll see what they say. I decided like, why do I have to send this whole thing back and then them send me another one? Another thing is, is that uh, the bolt that they supplied right here is uh, not long enough. So I need to go get one that's about a half inch bigger. Uh, not a huge deal. Um, just gonna go to Home Depot and grab one of those. And uh, right now what I'll be doing is working on installing the rear lift kit on this. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it. There's a million videos online about how to lift a golf cart and the principles are basically the same. After I get all the stuff on, I'll go through and I'll talk about uh, why I chose the things that I chose for this cart. All right guys, if you check out right here, this, these bushings on this shock are just completely rotted out. And uh, this one, I'm not even sure how this got bent so badly, but I'm gonna replace these shocks anyways. I figured that they would need replaced and uh, glad I'm doing that. You can see the motor is right here. It's a little rusty, but still runs fine. I'm gonna definitely upgrade this to the speed code four or five. I'm not really sure if speed code five actually exists or not, but uh, I'm gonna do that. And if it's not fast enough for me, I'm gonna, probably do the Navitas upgrade. All right, so since we're gonna put a rear seat kit on this car, I uh, decided to beef up the rear leaf springs and you can see this one is the original, easily picked up. This one has four leaves on it and it is substantially much more heavy and uh, this should definitely do what we're looking for it to do. All right guys, so it's been a few days and I finally got this lift kit all together. Uh, unfortunately, some of the hardware in the kit was not correct. And I think I meant to mention this before, but one of the grease fittings was broken um, right here. So I took it out. Uh, they said that they're gonna send me a whole new spindle and grease fitting. So I'm sure that we could just get the grease fitting in there and be all right. Um, just a few things I got left on this lift kit is I gotta grease all the fittings up here in the front and then take it for a test drive. But uh, you can see back here, uh, these I had to put these spacers in here because this thread actually stops right around here and it wouldn't uh, tighten all the way to where I needed it. Also with these heavy duty springs, I had to grind down the top of this bolt that comes through here so that this plate up here would sit flat. Um, but you can see everything in here is looking nice and uh, good so right now uh, <clears throat> so I'm actually getting a custom interior for this done I'm having a custom floor mat done for this and then the roof which is not here it's over at tier one auto house and uh, those guys are gonna wrap a, on the bottom something really cool for me so what I think I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put a blanket on the on top of these batteries and then just take it for a test drive and see if I can notice the speed increase because uh, everybody in the golf cart community says the bigger diameter tire that you have, um, the faster your cart will go. Um, now, this cart right here does about 22, 23 miles an hour. Uh, this cart was doing about 11 to 12. And uh, I need to be able to at least keep up with him. So that just wasn't gonna work. So, so I put the bigger tires on it. Uh, we'll see how much faster it goes. I'm not expecting a whole lot. And then, uh, there's a speed code that you can do. There's a little uh, port right here, which you can put a little speed code into and it'll increase it to about 20 miles an hour. With the tires, we're probably looking at about 22, 23 miles an hour, uh, which should be plenty. 
If not, I'm gonna do an AC conversion kit uh, with a bigger motor and uh, that should put us up well above that. But that's quite the expense. We'll see uh, if I can't just get away with it because the speed code only costs $100 and I'd much rather try that first and if I have to increase to the expensive kit then I'm only out 100 bucks. All right, so we're doing the speed test. We're gonna race the gas cart against the electric cart. Obviously, it's gonna, I'm gonna get him off the line because he got the lithium batteries and it's electric, um, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna smoke me at the end. So we're gonna go down to the cul-de-sac. Three, two, one, go. Dang. So I'm definitely gonna have to put that new speed code in and try to get this thing going to try to keep up with that thing because that thing rips. All right, guys, I just took the floor mat out because I'm gonna change the floor mat anyways, but uh, found this right here behind the floor mat. Don't like that because people's feet go up here. Um, I mean, these Blue Sea systems uh, are actually really good but I don't like where this is mounted. I'm gonna make a plate and stick it in here. And uh, I'm gonna take all these electronics off. I don't know what they do. Half of them don't even work. I'm replacing all of them. And that way I know what everything does. Everything will be labeled and clean and properly installed. And we'll get this thing all rocking and rolling. <clears throat> all right, so I didn't get as far as I wanted to with this cart today, but when I pulled this panel off right here and was looking behind here, I found some burned up wires. There was just a rat's nest. So I'm gonna pull all this stuff out, remove all this stuff and properly wire this cart. Um, definitely didn't want anything catching on fire because that would not be a good time on a cart that we're spending so much time with. So get all that stuff cleaned up and get this cart tip top Magoo. All right guys, so it's been a few weeks and a lot of work and I'm sorry that I didn't film all of the restoration process on this golf cart. It just takes so much time to get the camera out and then explain every little thing that I'm doing. But here is the finished product right here. This is a 2005 club car precedent that sat neglected in somebody's backyard for over a decade. And <clears throat> here it is restored. I mean, <clears throat> it's not fully done, but it's dang close to being done right here. Uh, the only th there's only a couple things I want to do to it. I want to do something to the front. Uh, there's somebody that makes like a light up emblem right here, uh, kind of like how you see on luxury cars. Uh, I'm just not sure that I want to buy that yet. I don't know if it's a good quality product or not. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to paint these right here green to match my floor mats. These floor mats are uh, unique. Um, they have this design on decomats.com, but they didn't have the color I wanted. So I sent them this color and this is the one I wanted to do, but I had the colors reversed. So what you see green here is usually black. And then what you see black is usually green. So that I had the colors reversed. I kind of like it that way. I had the rear one done to match in this and I had them put print. What does this mean on here? Which is an inside joke for me and my cousins. Here you can see I had the dash painted uh, by Lehman Paints here in Vegas. Um, this is just a gloss black. Uh, this right here, this color is a Grigio Telesto, which is actually a Lamborghini color. So from far away, it kind of looks just like a regular color, no flake or anything. But when you get up on it, you can see that there is a little bit of flake to that. And uh, there's already a little bit of hairline scratches in it from me cleaning the cart. It's definitely having my friend come over. He's gonna paint correct this cart, put a ceramic coating on it so we don't have to worry about that anymore. You can see we got the new wheels on there, looking nice. I uh, still gotta do an alignment on the cart. We put the Kingzilla six inch lift on there, but, and I got that from Amazon. Uh, what sold me on it was, oh, they have really detailed instructions, which they do, however, it didn't come with all of the parts. One of the grease fittings was broken off and I contacted them. They were gracious enough to send it out or send another one out, which I still haven't received. They say they have sent one out, 
Uh, they were responsive through all of the trials and tribulations because there was a lot of missing hardware, a lot of hardware that wasn't the correct length, and I had to go and grab hardware myself to get it to fit. Same with the back, I put the HD springs on from Amazon. I think they're like the 101L brand or whatever that line is and uh, the top the nut comes out too far so you had to grind it down so if you don't have the tools or the mechanical knowledge to solve these problems yourself uh, you might want to take it to somebody who can or have a friend come over and help you so you can see uh, the other seat was definitely like a more luxurious seat but it was all torn up so i had to order a new seat we put these mod seat covers on uh, and my brother and i have not done seat covers ever it was a, i wouldn't say it was like the easiest but it wasn't super hard uh just get the staple out stapler out and just stretch it out and uh get it done it's definitely something that you could do in your garage i put a billet steering wheel on the cart with a half wrap so you can see that this is still billet right here and then you can actually change the color this does have the horn function but it's not for that this is actually a car steering wheel but it's the same diameter as a golf cart steering wheel all i did was put this little adapter from this to this from the wheel to the adapter to the uh which is to the golf cart hub so uh you're gonna need this if you want to put this billet steering wheel on uh and i think this takes it from a from a five to six bolt which is this to a nine bolt which is the uh, steering wheel put a brand new steering wheel cover on here i think it really looks nice if you look up here i told the guys over at tier one auto house i wanted a ufo on my roof and i think they perfectly executed it that looks really cool uh definitely something a little bit different i wanted to do a space theme on this one so i put a light bar on here as you can see i zip tied it to the existing mirror because it definitely just fits it's a clean look you can hardly tell it's there the wires for everything are ran through the column front and the back, um, but it definitely works. Like it didn't, I didn't want to zip tie it because I think it's kind of janky, but I wanted to actually put it right here in the front. There was no real clean way of me doing it until my cousin suggested zip tying it to the mirror and it actually doesn't look that bad. I've off-roaded it going about 20 miles an hour, fully loaded. We've bounced around and, hit, and it has not failed. So I like it there. Um, it's super bright for the nighttime. Uh, you can actually see through it with the windshield up as well, uh, which I thought you wouldn't be able to. You turn the key and in here is where all my auxiliary lights and stuff are so see we got the light bar the fog lights are actually for the turn signals and all the regular lights on the car so you can see if i put that on i'll put the horn on the underglow and the roof light so let's see my roof light is these rainbow effect lights up here and that match my underglow which it's so bright right now uh, you won't be able to tell that that's rainbow. I'll show you guys later. It's a little too bright to see any of the other lights that are on right now. I'll have to show you when it gets a little darker or if I can go in the shade and show you guys. Um, but you can see you got the turn signals here, left, right, and the horn. But I got a little surprise underneath the cart. If you were to crawl underneath there, you'd be able to see that I installed air horns underneath here. And that's all controlled right here. You have that button to set it off. It's a fun little thing to have on the cart. Uh, definitely catches a lot of people off guard. I just like messing around with it. As we move to the back, you can see we put the Mad Jacks Genesis 300 kit on here. It's a nice little flip seat kit. Uh, definitely missing hardware. Some of the hardware wasn't long enough. It wasn't as user friendly as I'd like for something of that caliber to be. Like if I spend a premium money for premium product i expect everything to be there and i expect that to be very user friendly to install which it kind of wasn't but overall after it's on and some forceful putting it on the cart uh it's it's actually a really nice kit uh, we definitely beat the hell out of it already and held up to its standard for music we put this jbl 
party box 110 in the back which fits perfectly i wanted to do a full sound system on this cart but you know i could have easily spent a thousand dollars this was on sale for black friday 250 bucks um my brother has the same one and we can link them together so we can listen to the same thing at the same time we can be about 200 feet apart and play the same exact music <clears throat> so another thing i did to this cart that is kind of annoying is when you put these carts into reverse they have some type of alarm to let you know that they're in reverse uh, usually when you hit this button right here and put it in reverse it will have a annoying sound as you can see my cart does not do that there's a little alarm behind the panel in there that you can just disconnect or take out like i did and just throw it away all completely um, because it's just annoying and i don't want that on my cart so i threw it away uh, definitely an improvement i'm not sure if you guys want to do that yeah i get it it's kind of there for safety but I'm an adult and I know when my cart's in reverse. But taking it out is something that I chose to do. So we got the cart back in my garage and got all the underglow lit up here. You can see it. This is what it looks like when we have the cart parked in full party mode. You can see we have the speaker going off back here, has its own lights on here. Definitely looks cool, sounds phenomenal. I won't play anything on it for you guys because I don't want a copyright infringement on my channel. As you can see, it looks phenomenal right here. Uh, you can go up here, hit the lights. Definitely looks good. Lights on in the back. We put the turn signal on. Definitely, you know, we got turn signals on the cart. Uh, brake lights down there. Brake lights work. And most importantly, if it's real dark, you go down there, hit this button, and it'll light up the whole night. And maybe that's something I got to do tonight is definitely bring out the cart so you can see the differences between that little light and that light bar it does wonders um, as you can see I have a few blank spots on that aux beam panel down here and that's so I can run a few more accessories if I want that panel I actually put in here and you can see it's all wired up right here and man that that right there makes life so much easier because it has an internal relay already on it. You don't have to wire relays into every single thing that's gonna take a little more power. So I would definitely highly recommend that to you. It's definitely worth the investment if you value your time versus money. I've already pre-wired stuff into these poles um, just so I can run more accessories up to the roof. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It's just something I did. So. Uh, once it gets dark out tonight, I'll take the cart out and you can actually see, uh, so you can see the differences between the regular light and the light bar. All right guys, so I'm outside. I'm gonna try to show you guys the difference between the regular golf cart lights and the light bar. So here we go, regular golf cart lights on, and then we're gonna go and turn on the light bar. Much brighter. It definitely helps when you're driving somewhere out, like out in the desert and stuff at night, when it's really hard to see. And for the $60 that it costs for this light bar, it's definitely worth it. With all that being said, if you guys like this video, hit that like button below, smash if that's something you wanna do, subscribe if you already haven't. We're gonna see you guys in the next video. Stay free, my friends.